Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the executive meeting finished just a short time ago, and we have agreed to support the Health Minister in lifting the restrictions on access to graveyards. This is about balancing public health concerns with the basic human need for people to visit their loved one's grave. And in lifting this restriction, it is vital that members of the public heed the advice around going out in public when they are in a cemetery, respecting that two metre social distancing rule, limiting their interaction with others, and of course, washing their hands thoroughly after they have been in public. Losing a loved one is a, a huge moment in anyone's life. And whilst homes all across Northern Ireland are having to grieve without a wake or a public funeral, I do want to take an opportunity to sympathise with political colleagues who are currently grieving. My colleague Edwin Poots, who will bury his father shortly, having been involved in caring for Charlie over recent years, I know it has been very difficult for Edwin not to be close to him as he approached the end of his life. And Charlie was elected uh, to this place uh, in 1973 and was a founding member of the Democratic Unionist Party. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson buried his father yesterday. Uh, Jim was uh, a big character in the Kingdom of Morn and someone who served his country with distinction. And I know Jim was incredibly proud of his family uh, and they were so important to him. I also want to sympathise with the family of a former MLA, Oliver McMullen, on the death of his 22-year-old daughter. And those of us with children of that age uh, will immediately think of our own home. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has impacted on our traditional approach to mourning in this part of the world. We have been speaking with funeral directors as many non-COVID-19 related burials still take place. And during the pandemic, it is strongly recommended that funeral arrangements are made with your undertaker by telephone uh, and not in person at the funeral director's premises or the family home. And while funeral notices can still be placed in newspapers or using online services, funeral arrangements should not be advertised. So in order to prevent the spread of COVID-19, wakes should not be held. Funerals should be in private, adhering to social distancing guidance, and only a maximum of 10 people should attend. Current restrictions on social gathering and the need for social distancing means that any gathering such as uh, our common after a funeral should also not take place. And I know, we both know, that a lot is being asked of the bereaved at this time as you grieve. But we would not be asking you to respect these restrictions if it were not quite literally a matter of life and death. So please do listen to the advice of your funeral directors. And to the wider population, uh, as we head into this, beautiful weekend, please do remain at home as much as possible. And if you do need to go out for essential work or shopping or exercise, please respect the social distancing advice uh, and wash your hands thoroughly. That's the most effective thing you can do to stop the spread of COVID-19. By following that advice so far, you have made a major contribution to reducing the peak uh, of this pandemic and we cannot lapse uh, now. We have flattened the curve, but now is not the time to be careless or try to cheat the rules. We are not out of the woods and trying to make a quick dash for the exit would be a mistake. We are working on a careful plan for recovery. We will be urging people to think about what the new normal looks like in their home or in their work or in their neighborhood. And social distancing will be with us for a long time if we are going to protect life uh, and indeed our NHS. Rather than placing the whole country into a, a permanent deep freeze, we will need to learn how to work and go about our business and observe social distancing. In terms of testing, we are entering a new phase. Testing and tracing and tracking is key to all of that. And we discussed this at the executive and a need to ramp up our capability. And to that end, we are retaining environmental health officers from local government to help increase our capacity. And for this work to be effective, we need to be able to test and trace. That's key 
to our recovery and renewal. One without the other is not going to be uh, effective. With regard to connectivity, uh, it would of course be a nightmare if the ship stopped uh, running between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK and we welcome the government's support package for the shipping industry. We continue to speak to the Chancellor about making our air, road and sea supply routes more resilient. And finally, for those concerned about nursery and school places, the Education Authority has clarified that they will be issuing letters to parents on behalf of schools and playgroups to advise on the outcome of the ch child's preschool or primary one applications. And letters should be with parents uh, next week on Wednesday, the 29th of April. Uh, and the Education Authority will also be opening an online portal which will be accessible via their website on that date. Parents and guardians who had applied online in January 2020 can log in uh, and obtain their information in relation to their children. Thank you very much.